Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 42 of IGEL Weekly. I'm your host, Andy Whiteside. This is one of our uh, bi-weekly corporate uh, podcasts where we review a corporate blog. Um, uh, we are missing Chris Feeney. I don't know, Chris is, uh, Ron, where's Chris at? Uh, traveling to Las Vegas. Traveling to Las Vegas. Awesome. Is he at a conference or a personal? <clears throat> uh, conference he's going to, yeah. Yeah, which one? It's um, with um, another one of their, um, one of our other um, partners. Okay. Yeah, it, no it's worries. kind of their, their conference kind of training and stuff like that. So okay. the whole holding it in Las Vegas, getting well, everyone together. That's good for Chris to be there. He's really, really knowledgeable and able to articulate your story um, from a sales and technical, business and technical perspective. Speaking of technical, Seb's with us, uh, even though it's a corporate uh, podcast, Seb's with us. Seb, how's it going? Quite good. Thanks for asking. I'm just playing around since yesterday with the last uh, IGEL firmware that we released and uh, just trying to fix some small bug that we noticed, but nothing, nothing critical. So just so having you the guy the that they put all the releases in front of and say, try to break it? More or less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, uh, this way. which firmware is that you're playing with? What number? 1106 250, fresh release yesterday with the latest Zoom VDI plugin, Cisco JVDI components, etc. So it's pretty cool. It was something that we didn't plan uh, until 1107. So the official release coming at mid end of March. Mm -hmm. But for some, yeah, let's say, Internal reasons, we put the private build that we created uh, outside of the standard releases <laughs> into a public one, this one. So we are now having latest Citrix Workspace app version and everything we need. So for the moment, it looks pretty stable. And uh, last Glockner made an uh, amazing job on uh, making the unified communication guide again, updated more or less zero day release. And seems pretty stable until now. Okay, good. That's, a, that's an honest answer from an engineer right there. Um, so I kind of talked to Ron, but I didn't really talk to Ron about Ron. Ron, uh, I don't know, you've been on one or two of these. What's your role at iGEL? Yeah, so I, I work with um, you know companies like yours to uh, make sure everyone's enabled to embed iGEL into their offerings and solutions. So um, Chris Feeney and I work, work together on that for the Americas. I have a quick technical question for you and Seb. If I'm using offloaded Zoom in an iGel, say a Citrix or VMware virtual desktop or AVD virtual desktop, if I look at the about in the Teams or the about in the Zoom, am I going to be able to tell from, from that that I'm doing offloaded Zoom or do I just need to drag the screen around and watch the video chase it? Uh, that's just the case, an older version of the Windows Media Player redirection. That was something that was the easiest test to see if uh, the media redirection on Citrix is working. But in that case, no, you don't need that anymore. It's usually, opti it says optimized or AJAX optimized. It depends from the kind of uh, desktop virtualization you're using, but the client is telling you. So you no you need. To, but you go to help. But you just, go to, you just go to about, yeah. And, yeah. and it'll say, like in Teams on the bar at the top, yeah. when you click about, it'll say, Optimize, media optimize. Is that true for Zoom and others as well? Yeah. Okay. All right. The only, the only difference, or let's say no difference, but the only complication, it's, uh, it's on Cisco sometimes. It's not that clear because sometimes it's just a logo showing up, which is sometimes not self explaining. Yeah. But in any case, in any solution, you have the ability to see that inside of the, of the client, inside of the terms of the solution. I can tell you dragging the window around still works, but it, the latency is so low that you really have to be looking for it to see the, uh, to see the fact that it's being offloaded. Yeah. It's gotten so much better. Well, guys, um, we the also other, the other thing you can do with things is, is like bring up the task manager and, and see where, where things are running. I have on, on the iGEL community on GitHub, I have a little video that I, that I posted up there with my, my Dynabook laptop. And I'm actually running Zoom local on the endpoint, and I've got Microsoft Edge custom, you know, custom partition for a browser, and I'm running also Spotify local on the iGel endpoint, and I have all of those audio streams going at the same time, and and you can from the task manager see everything everything running there as well, and the load um, on the system. So task manager in the virtual desktop or task manager local. Task manager local, yeah. But you should also see from from the from your your VM as well the task manager and see that it has low CPU loads on that. Well, I, I bring all this up because I have 
couple people in the company that aren't technical and I can't ask them to do all the things we just talked about really I, I guess I could maybe they are in technology uh, but the ability to do the help and about that's where I need to kind of figure out is that my quickest way to challenge them on are, are you truly offloading it or is your you know latency in the virtual desktop so low that you're getting away with doing it inside the desktop and don't realize it yeah and as Ron mentioned if you look at the task manager it's not only the CPU or RAM usage which is going higher but you have also it depends from the solution you're using but also a specific process coming up on the top so that's something that even a standard user could identify quite easily uh, spoke, and, spoken like an engineer that doesn't understand the standard user right and <laughs> and, and ideally what, what you're trying to do with that offloading especially as you're moving your workloads up to Azure you want to minimize your your cost spend for your Azure stuff. So you want to, you know, look at offloading that, and then with a product like Nerdio, being able to optimize and see what's going on on you know in the Azure um, yeah. environment, you know, and maybe yeah. drop the VM size down some to reduce costs because you're offloading a lot of your tasks, right? Well, we're gonna we're gonna get to all that when we review the blog in a minute, but that's a good segue yeah. into Matt Scudder. Matt is with us from a company called Nerdio. Uh, Matt, what's your role over at Nerdio and what does Nerdio do? Hey Andy, great to be here. Uh, I am the Vice President of Enterprise Sales here at Nerdio. Uh, Nerdio is effectively the easy button for Azure Virtual Desktops and Windows 365, which sounds like we're going to get into here on the, uh, on the, on the blog. Um, you know, my job solely is really to uh, help spread the team uh, globally for Nerdio and help embrace our customers as they look to make the journey into cloud computing, either from previous platforms or for the first time, uh, reduce cost and complexity of the overall uh, cloud computing environment, specifically with Azure Virtual Desktops and Windows 365. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a great segue into the document we're covering today, which is the uh, solutions brief. Um, that covers the uh, IGEL and, and Nerdio engagement around WVD, uh, AVD, uh, the new name, right? Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows, uh, de Windows Virtual Desktop, Windows 365. Uh, I think the main thing to highlight here in the, um, in the introduction is the fact that w AVD or even Windows 365 by itself is a good solution um, but doesn't have everything we need to be able to implement, manage, maintain it. Um, Matt, what would you say the, the highlights are for what Nerdio does to make WVD, AVD work better? And we're going to get into a bunch of it, so maybe just at a high level. Why, why did Nerdio have to exist? Why does it have to exist? Sure, sure. It's a great question, Andy. You know, when we look at native AVD, um, it, is a, it is a very foundationally solid tool, but it, it requires a lot of um, manpower and, and effort to maintain, manage, and deploy these environments. If you were to grab some of the best and brightest uh, AVD uh, engineers on the planet, really, it would take them probably two weeks, maybe three or four weeks potentially for them to deploy a fully functioning Azure virtual desktop environment. With Nerdio, we can actually deploy that same environment in under two hours. We do it every day. Um, and in fact, if you had an existing Azure Virtual Desktop deployment, we can install Nerdio uh, on top of that in less than 10 minutes. Really, we are just an extension of the native Azure environment, right? So um, we, we extend the native ABD experience and we add over 200 features and benefits on top of ABD and Windows 365 really making it a more competitive offering for customers that are evaluating other brokers in the industry and looking for something that reduces the overall complexity for them to manage, um, but also fits their business needs. So Ron and Seb, would you say this is the modern day version of Microsoft producing like remote desktop services and partners like Nerdio coming along and, and making it more feature rich and, and better? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I, I mean, just having all of the, um, you know, the complexities and things to set up and, you know, typically when someone's moving off of their maybe legacy um, VDI stack and looking to move there for a certain use case, being able to have someone like Nerdio that can automate all of those workflows and, you know, just kind of, as, as you're saying, hit the easy button, right? So. 
But definitely leverage the, the complex. I mean, I can only speak for, for, for the European market, but in that case, most of the people are already afraid to move to the cloud. And if the complexity is increasing then during the initial installation, because you're speaking to people who are used to install everything on-prem and where the partner is not uh, able to deliver such, let's say a one solution in one hand, it's definitely one of the easiest solution I've seen on um, IGET events that the only touch that I had, because obviously I'm not an, an end customer, but I had the ability to see it on end customer sites during common uh, common events. And it was a pretty impressive the speed that Nerdy is using for delivering virtual desktops. And that's something that already impressed even the customers. And, and one of the other things is, you know, when I'm working with some of our managed service partners to integrate things in, and they're talking about their journey to, to AVD, you know, the, or talking to customers, they're like, hey, we, we, we stood it up, it was kind of complex, but we're, we're super smart, we got it going, but man, our Azure costs and spend were really high, we're going to have a hard time, you know, selling that to our, to our clients and stuff, and that's where I mentioned, you know, with Nerdio is, have you looked at Nerdio, and, and, you know, that may be able to, you know, help in those costs, get a cost effective yeah. um, solution, right, and manage those Azure costs, <laughs> so there's no surprises at the, at the end of the month, right, Matt? <laughs> well, you're, you're going to, you're, we're going to get to that for sure. Let me, let me go sure. around the horn real quick and ask you guys all one simple question, Matt, what is your estimated time that Microsoft will have all the features it needs in the product and you won't need a third party to make it better? Probably never. If we're being honest. All right, Matt goes with never. Ron, what do you think? Oh, he walked away. Uh, Ron, what's your, what's your ETA on when oh. Microsoft will have it all covered without third party help? Um, you know, never. I mean, I think they just keep adding features and, and, and functionality. And then it's just, did you find those features like, you know, disks or, or, or whatever, right? The new new functionality. So I, I think I would agree with Matt that, so I got two you numbers. know, Nerdios. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And then the reason why it's never, well, go, okay, uh, Seb, <laughs> your answer to that question. How long will it be before Microsoft has it all covered? I would uh, split the answer in two sections. If I think back about the first remote desktop server that I installed in my former companies and the Citrix environment at the same time, I would say that Microsoft is not there. And uh, it took about 20 years from, from, from day one where I started this journey until now. Yeah. So if I think of um, such kind of AVD processes simplifying, I don't think they will they will reach it because that's not their focus. Well, so, so let me add this let me add this statement to this question. Um, <clears throat> well, two things. Um, one, you know, time and technology marches on. So whatever they solve, whatever we, whatever Nerdio helps them solve today, there'll be something new tomorrow. Like literally tomorrow, there'll be a feature that somebody needs. Microsoft's going to have to take their big machine and make happen quickly, uh, or they're going to have to rely on third parties to make happen for the short term, the midterm, the long term, and even then make it the best it can possibly be, right? I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why this is going to happen the way it's going to happen is it will never stop. The need for innovation will never stop, and Microsoft can't keep up. That's where they need their third party partners like Nerdio and IJO. That, right. that, I mean, that answer is the never, right? It's yeah. got to be never. <laughs> yeah, never. Now, I will ask you guys this, and not to go into a lot of detail, we still have a lot to cover here. Um, RDS, Remote Desktop Services from Microsoft, they were in it to be in it. Would you say that in the world of AVD, Windows 365, they're more in it to win it than they were with Remote Desktop? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's, uh, I think just the previous conversation that we have continues to compile that, you know, Microsoft over the years has always had a competing offer, um, but they've never been really focused on being pure competition or bleeding edge, right? Microsoft's kind of MO is, is status quo. They're going to have an offering. Um, it's going to be very cost effective, AVD being, being free, right? It's pretty cost effective. Um, you know, they just want to be a participant in the market. And as you said, right, they want to lean on their third party vendors and ISVs uh, in order to help kind of fill the gaps in their overall portfolio and total solution. How about if I say it like this? Are they they're in it to win it, but they know they can't go undefeated and they know it's a team game. How about that? Yeah, I would completely agree with that. And, and the reason they're in it to win it is because they want those Azure workloads to run in their data centers, just like Zintegra wants workloads to run in our data centers. 
because that meter never stops. Absolutely. All right, um, let's jump through the article here a little bit. I think we've covered the why, the reason, right, why we're doing this. The first section talks about WVD made easy. I think Seb and others um, mentioned this a minute ago, but Seb, you mentioned that uh, uh, AVD is easier because of Nerdio. You've seen that at conferences. You don't get to play with it firsthand, but like, can you kind of just summarize what you saw happen versus what it would have taken to do it natively? Um, the demo was... How I, I mean, it was a recorded demo in that case, but it was just a standard administrator who had to deliver a new AVD desktop to a complete new company inside of Azure. And, and I can't remember the time, but it was about three to four hours of uh, different processes and asking um, where different administrators of the company needed to, uh, to jump in. What Nerdia delivered was just from one hand, um, from the beginning of the Azure uh, Active Directory integration until the moment where the AVD desktop showed up. I don't know, Matt, but it, it was less than 20 minutes, if I remember right, in the demo that uh, one of your colleagues delivered. So it was extremely fast. And it was just, yeah, kind of with that, that next, next, next. And at the end, the AVD process showed up and uh, the Azure connected to it uh, indirectly. So it was just a simple, I would not say simple, smart and secure because that's something that we already trademarked it, but it was obviously extremely fast and easy for the administrator. So it just leveled the, the first fear that you might have if you speak about um, cloud delivered workspaces. So, so Matt, I, uh, I intentionally asked the engineer to answer that question first, because it I hopefully just made your job easy, but it sounds like Seb just said from a graphical interface with the appropriate permission, uh, a few clicks through the system and, and he was done. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and that's the story across really all administrative functions with AVD or Windows 365. You know, what we see in a lot of these environments from our customers is there's typically you know, one engineer or maybe two engineers that kind of the rise above the rest of their IT team, um, that really the burden falls to them to manage the full ins and outs of these types of environments, right? And, and they have the concern that if they were to give a level one admin permissions into the environment, they're going to do things that will ultimately break it. Um, you know, when we talk about, you know, making, you know, AVD fast and easy, we not only do that from a deployment standpoint, but also from continuation of managing those deployments, right? So allowing access where access is needed um, is one of the huge features that a lot of our customers, you know, love and benefit from on a daily basis, allowing level one, level two, level three uh, administrators the, the rights that they need and the ability to make changes that they need, but not the ability to make changes that they don't need. So really, again, just making it more easy to consume and, and to manage and deploy and maintain. Yeah, yeah I, I love what you just said, uh, deploy, uh, manage and maintain. Um, it, it, is it fair to say that if I try to do AVD native, uh, I'm gonna have to find things that may not be easy to find in the UI and I'm probably gonna have to jump into PowerShell to get some more advanced things done? Certainly in PowerShell, uh, it will be your best friend. And I think that's, you know, we find customers all the time that are extremely tech savvy and have, have you know, got these environments up and off the ground and have created their own scripts and even tried to get into some of the things that we do around cost savings and, um, and, and optimizing those environments. But they, they fall far short as to, as to what we can do. Uh, and typically I'd say 99% of the time when we demo them, uh, what we can do, they see in their in their brain, right? The ticker and the light bulb continues to go off uh, time and time again. Of man, that would have made my life so much easier. Man, my life would be so much easier. Right? I've I've got to move forward with this solution. Right. So let's jump to the next section, Ron. I'm going to come to you for this, and that is uh, security or secure. Um, where does the IGEL and Nerdio and AVD story come together around a secure uh, asynchronous offering? <clears throat> Yeah, re really, the, the journey is when, when you're talking to a client about moving to AVD, you know, and, and moving their windows or their applications to Azure, you know, it, it comes back down to the endpoint. If you're moving those workloads and everything up there and you still have windows on the endpoint, all you may be doing is, is adding costs and having that, um, you know, security posture. So by moving your windows and, and your 
you know, application workloads to AVD, then it just makes sense to go ahead and convert your endpoint, your existing endpoints to run iGel to have that secure connection, secure connection into the environment, right? And minimize, you know, the cost, spend that extra money, you know, use those laptops for a longer period of time or desktops for a longer period of time and invest that money in, in Nerdio and your Azure spend or return it to your business units. Ron, are you guys, are you guys at iGel not worried about people installing um, rogue applications on those Linux endpoints? Well, by default, you have everything locked down. You could even configure it to, um, you know, to drop right into AVD. So the user doesn't see anything at all. All they do is turn it on and it, you know, presents them, you know, to log into AVD and everything behind is, is locked down. Yeah, that was, that was kind of a interesting, softball. Andy, because if we have the discussion quite often also in the Azure community, it's uh, the Agile operating system um, secured enough to not use um, antivirus solution locally. Is there already enough security that you do not need such kind of solutions? And the question is yes and no. So I would say your question is definitely interesting because the application is one hand, but the other hand is the end user. And the user always find a way to try to tweak around to access the web browser or whatever. And in my opinion, if you have a uh, web browser and thought on the endpoint, it's still a way to get something Batman on your uh, on your endpoint, so that's definitely something that we are uh, covering even more on the OS12 topic. So for every listener who is interested in getting some insight in the security topic of OS12, stay tuned. We'll definitely deliver something in the next month. Um, but that's definitely something that we are aware of, especially if you think about the metric that the Agile operating system could deliver in the future. Yeah. So, so my my marketing sales guy way of asking that question was the idea that you guys would just say, nope, don't have to worry about it, all done. Uh, but I love that Ron and Seb both gave kind of answers that said, uh, you know, more in, in depth as to um, how it's possible, but not likely. But, you know, Linux based, read only, accessing Windows in a data center securely over a remote protocol that hopefully has a bunch of stuff turned off. Um, but, uh, you know, guys, you guys are so honest that you wouldn't just say, nope, no problem. You, uh, you said that it could be, uh, but surely it's the, the odds are greatly reduced, uh, when accessing it this way. And so all of a sudden you have this secure thing being accessed, hopefully secure thing, if you do it right and Nerdio can help, uh, over some protocol with a secure device. And you got a bunch of your check boxes right there. Uh, Matt, what is, what does Nerdio do in the world of AVD and windows 365? And I keep saying those specifically, because there are two different things that are related, but not necessarily the same. Uh, what does Nerdio do to help secure the environment on the backside of what Ron and Seb just discussed? Yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of customers are moving to the cloud with, you know, kind of really this, this unparalleled amount of threats that are out there, right? It's just, it's too costly to try to secure these types of, of virtual desktop environments, you know, on-prem at, at, in present day. So, you know, you, you maximize the ability of Azure to really take care of all those security threats from a penetration standpoint for you. And we continue to build upon that really just being a native extension of Azure, right? So there's no connections on our end into the environment, no visibility whatsoever. The environment is completely just an application on the marketplace behind all of the safe and secure firewalls and stability that Azure provides. Um, you know, past that, you know, really you look at the edge as, as IGEL mentioned, right? We deliver those, um, you know, we deliver those AVD ready desktops to IGEL that's locking down your edge and really just kind of eliminating threats from the edge to the data center back and forth. Right. It's, a, it's an end-to-end -end story. Um, question for you guys, and this is kind of off topic a little bit, but five years ago, if I was going to a customer to try to talk about virtualizing the desktop, maybe even hosting the cloud, but just hosting in their own data center versus deploying it, who was my number one competitor in that scenario to have to compete against moving to virtual workloads versus physical deployed Windows workloads? Who was my number one person I was fighting against? Sorry, loaded question. It was Microsoft. Microsoft wanted SCCM to be the answer for everything that I was saying, don't do, do this, uh, to the point where even a year ago, I had a customer ask me why anybody would ever virtualize their desktop. Not a customer, another Microsoft partner. Uh, who's my biggest advocate these days to doing that? Microsoft. 
right? They've, they've gone a full 180 into deploy, deploy, deploy to a world where uh, host it in Azure and connect with anything that makes sense to connect with. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, yeah, and you, you, you see that from Microsoft and, and, and you see the, the sales reps, you know, they're all kind of focused on, on that, you know, you know, spend in Azure, right? And, and not just, you know, shelfware, right? You know, buy some stuff and it just sits on a shelf. They want actual consumption in Azure and, and looking at, at, you know, with Nerdio and others to help, you know, speed that process up, right? So I, I brought that up intentionally for the following reason. I hope it's not because they want fatter commission checks. We can argue <laughs> whether that's true or not. What I hope they're seeing is the inability to ever secure Microsoft at the edge because it's a great operating system, but too many people want to attack it versus other operating systems that are less likely to be attacked. My hope is that this is all being driven because we, the pendulum has flipped and now we're on the, this is the only way to ever secure it. Uh, just like, you know, we don't keep our money in our mattress anymore. We keep it in the bank virtually, um, but we keep it in the bank or safe deposit box because we know we can never keep it safe in the mattress. It has to be a security driven world. And I think that's really from a technical guy's perspective, what's causing this to have to go away from deployed to, um, to a world where it's hosted. Yeah, I, I think the other thing you you could step back and look at another Microsoft product just with, you know, you know, um, Exchange, right? Your email, you know, they were selling it. People would stand up their own Exchange servers in their data center, and maybe they weren't patching it or updating to the latest. You know, then you get the whole, you know, Office, you know, 365, right? And have all of those tools up in Azure in the cloud where you have that cloud native can quickly update, quickly can secure it, all of those things. Now it just makes sense since you've got all your stuff up there, you know, your exchange, you've got your OneDrive, you've got all your data sitting up there. Why not put your endpoint right next to everything and then have iGel as an endpoint to, to deliver it? Everything's super fast. Yeah. Um, and it's, you've got the latest and greatest, you know, all the time. Yeah, but, uh, put your virtual endpoint somewhere where you can keep an eye on it, monitor it, maintain it, um, and connect to it however you want. Um, so we're probably going to run out of time. It's a great conversation. Uh, the next piece of the article talks about, the, the, the section says productive unified communications. I'm going to call it happy users, right? So we, we know we can't get away, especially in today's world, with these online meeting concepts. What is Nerdio and iGel doing to make AVD Windows 365 better at that scenario. Um, Seb, go ahead. I would maybe start with uh, the actual operating system itself. I mean, without wanting to uh, to, to put Nadi out of the discussion at that moment, but the, the first step was to integrate the AD core that we have in Azure OS. So we started a couple of years ago with uh, our own ADP integration, and then we were the first endpoint Linux operating system window where uh, was able to deliver the official WBD to, to that time client into his operating system. And then we waited a long time uh, for integration for a unified communication solution. We were obviously expecting Teams to be maybe faster than Zoom in that case, because Teams, Microsoft product, AVD and Microsoft products, so we were expecting that coming first. But surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, depends from the point of view, uh, Zoom jumped in quite quite soon, and so we integrated the Zoom VDI media plugin uh, that we have for Citrix and for, for VMware already in our firmware uh, to be able to do the offloading from the AVD solution. Because in former times, and that's something which was, yeah, let's say it, it was working, but it was not really something that we wanted to promote. If you could also use the uh, Zoom inside of the AVD without any kind of uh, media plugin solution by using some other redirection, but it's just not real-time communication. That's something that the media plugin just made us way easier to deploy. And then, and that's the uh, the, the part where Nadia is uh, jumping in, as soon as we covered the endpoint solution, what we did, we have now to cover the term is the um, uh, virtual desktop component. And that's why Nerdier is able to deliver, to be honest, I'm not such sure if I'm saying something else right, so Matt, just interrupt me if I'm saying something wrong, but the um, rollout of new media plugin and Zoom client inside of the AVT is something that you're also delivering, right? Absolutely. 
So, so let's talk about that. So Seb just talked about it from the IGEL side. Nerdio, let's talk about it, Matt, from the Nerdio side. And then we'll tie the two together and talk about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Sure. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to when it comes to Zoom, you know, Nerdio can automatically install and configure, you know, Zoom into those Azure Virtual Desktop workloads, right? So creating that automatic experience again, reducing the time and complexity to deploy those environments into your virtual desktop. And is that is that all it takes? I mean, I I think I know the answer, but it's really that simple. Yeah, it's pretty much that simple. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, and we may talk about it here leading up, but when you get into you know, any type of, you know, more rich multimedia experience, right, you know, 4K, um, AutoCAD, any sort of, um, you know, video editing, things of that nature, you know, we can take that a step and beyond and, and effectively, you know, help you, you know, maintain and deploy and manage those, you know, more GPU intensive user workloads, right, creating a, a rich multimedia experience for, not only your power users, but obviously your task and knowledge workers as well. So uh, let's do that. Let's jump into the rich multimedia user experience. Ron, <clears throat> take that from the IGEL side and the Nerdio side to the, to the best you can. And I, I'll just start by pointing out that this evolution of what we do on the collaborative side has its roots and origins in the multimedia side. Right, I, I, right. I mean, from, from a user point of view, we, we talked about moving all your data like if you're getting into CAD and CAM, large design sets, things like that, now having GPU enabled um, instances in Azure to, to run those CAD CAM applications and then use Nerdio to manage how those are spun up, how those are brought back down to, to minimize those you know, huge costs that can come from a GPU enabled um, instance in, in Azure. Yeah, I'd love that you um, mentioned the cost thing. We're going to talk about cost here in just a minute, but um, if people are going to invest the money into the hardware and software it takes to do the data center side of things, it's best that we get the most out of that we can. Uh, this is where the IGEL and Nerdio solutions can help. At the same time, if we're going to offload that down to the end user experience, that's where it's going to take small, smart hardware to take, a, take advantage of that local, smart software to take advantage of that local hardware uh, and in both cases, the IGEL story is going to be able to play along with those scenarios. Uh, Matt, what does uh, Nerdio do on the multimedia side of making AVD and Windows 365 better? Yeah, I mean, mostly it's in, in maintaining and optimizing those environments, right? So, you know, we're constantly looking for cost savings and ability to, you know, right size your, your workloads. So whether it's a um, task-based worker or these more user-rich media users for GPUs, you know, we're going to be able to come in, right-size those environments and make sure that you are paying for the resources that you use and not the ones that you're not. Well, I think I've heard the idea of saving money probably 10 times on this podcast so far. Let's talk about saving money. You guys ready? <laughs> do it. Do we, do we need to even talk about this point? I'm sure we do, right? At the end of the day, you know, green computing, um, virtual <laughs> desktops, digital workspaces, they're all great concepts and stories. But if money is not saved or made or both, ideally, um, it's not going to happen, right? The whole world and most things in it are driven by the ability to make or save money. Um, what, what, okay, so there's a whole section in the article that talks about saving money. I think we've covered many parts of it already, but but uh, Matt, let's let's go to you and talk about where this story together, IGEL, AVD, Windows 365, all working with Nerdio truly helps the team at the customer. And I say team intentionally, whether it's the CFO, uh, whether it's the CIO, whether it's a sysadmin, how do we save money using these two solutions as part of the Microsoft story? Yeah, absolutely. I think we could talk a, a whole podcast on, on Nerdio and saving money. Um, but, you know, when, when, when customers look at new technology, you know, they, they constantly find themselves in a point where, um, you know, one, they're moving into a completely different uh, and unfamiliar space that, that can be scary for them. They're, there's a lot of uncertainty around the cost of that, especially when we talk about cloud adoption and, and really a um, an understanding of what is it actually going to cost me when we get into those environments. Um, but then there's what you leave behind, right? The technology investments that you've had over the years that maybe still have good life in them. You know, how can we maximize the existing 
um, the existing investments that we've made is, is really where IGEL can step in for you. And I'll let Ron speak to that. But when it comes to Nerdio and, and how we effectively look at cloud computing, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's our mission statement, right? But, you know, probably one of the top pillars of what we do and why customers, um, you know, 99% of the time, if they move forward with AVD, they move forward with Nerdio, is that we really help to cost optimize the environment. We look at cloud computing and we identify every aspect of waste that there is to ensure that you truly only pay for what you use. And that comes down to even to our licensing model. Andy, you know, we only charge you for the monthly actors, uh, active users that you have. So, you know, if you had 4,500 users in the month of February, we would charge you for those 4,500 users. If the next month you only had 4,000, we only charge you for 4,000, right? So we want to make sure that you only leverage and pay for the resources that you use. I'll give you a quick, easy example of, of just one of many, many features that, that we can provide. In fact, actually, I'll give you two. Um, one is this concept of, you know, most customers have a traditional eight to five, eight to six environment. So when those users log off and go home for the day or for the weekend, why are we paying for all of these resources um, in Azure, right, that we're not leveraging? So we'll take half of your host pools and we'll spin those down. We'll take the other half and we'll put them in what we call a base state. And even if a user happens to log in after hours or over the weekend, they're doing some extra work for you, which is fantastic. We have a burst in time technology that will deliver those resources to them um, just in time. The user never knows the difference. The user experience never suffers. But just in that one feature alone, we can save you around 57% uh, of your Azure monthly bill. It's a huge cost savings, right? Something that sounds quite simple to do, um, but in theory to manually do this would be uh, extremely challenging and, and most likely would, would interfere with the customer experience. The other thing that we do, I think there's this, uh, this concept, if, you're, if your listeners are familiar, it's called reserved instances um, in, in Azure. This is a huge thing that Microsoft came up with. Basically, they say, hey, if you'll, if you'll commit to a set amount of resources uh, in Azure for a year or multiple years, we'll give you a very significant discount. I think it's like 60% off, right? So a huge cost savings. Most customers just kind of blindly take that and take that as a, a massive cost savings for them. We have a tool inside the product called RI Analytics. This is something that no one else in the world is even close to doing. And we'll actually realize that, hey, not every host pool is created equal. So certainly there could be host pools that would benefit and cost savings from, from reserve instances. But there may also be others that Nerdio can actually save you more money. So we'll look at each individual host pool over a 30 day period. And the tool will actually recommend to you which host pools you should move into reserve instances. And then we'll show you which ones we're actually saving you more money on. So again, just a couple of small features. The other really cool thing that, um, that I'll touch on briefly is in our actual tool, I think we live in a day and, and we've all seen this right where, you know, companies will talk to you about, uh, we can save you here and we can save you here. Uh, and when it comes down to having that conversation with the C-level to actually cut the check, uh, it's very, very hard all of a sudden to articulate where the actual dollars and cents are, right? A lot of times we talk about soft cost savings, and certainly we can save you up to 80% of the time and effort that it takes to maintain and manage these environments. But I think dollars and cents are important. We actually have a ticker inside of our dashboard that shows you down to the penny how much money we've saved you for the month in your Azure bill. So most of our customers pay for our licensing in the first week, typically around day to four to day six, everything else is icing on the cake. So saving money is, uh, is something Nerdio can certainly help you with. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. You, you sold me right there, right? If you, can <laughs> store, if you can save me money and show me the money you're saving me, um, that, that goes back to my very first job where if I could show the money being saved and, and back in the day, that meant I had to go through every invoice and mark through the uh, discount. So the customer could see it. Uh, that, that's, it's a smart way. I have a quick question for you and, and we'll see how the answer comes out. If Nerdio had to stack rank the features that they worked on first, is it the ones that are going to save the company money or is it the technology features, which, which order did those happen? Are they, is it a balanced approach? And, and maybe you don't even want to answer that, but 
it, at the end of the day, it's all about it's all about money, right? And making sure yeah. about what they're paying for. You know, I think that I think if we polled our our customers, you know, we have well over a million in users under management today. If we polled our customers and said, "What is more valuable to you, um, the cost savings or well, I, let me let me pose it in a better way." Would you would you still purchase Nerdio Manager for enterprise if it wasn't for the cost savings? If we didn't have any cost savings, and I think the answer would be yes, nine times out of ten. And I think it really comes down to you know the cost savings is great, right? I think it's what really makes it a no brainer for our customers. But when we look towards how we're evolving the product, obviously we're always looking for ways to make it more cost effective and a better TCO for our customers. But really, we want to provide you know, the best benefit to them from an ease of management standpoint and from optimizing the end user experience. So I think that, um, you know, certainly it's going to be heavily weighted on our focus towards providing a better experience for the end user, a better experience to that IT admin that's going to maintain and manage these deployments. Um, but certainly we, we do not let it slip when it comes to cost savings, as you can see in the article. Yeah. And, and, and I think the other conversation when, when we bring clients and stuff in and reference with Nerdio around this, they're like, well, maybe we can start with Nerdio and then switch over to Microsoft when they get better features and or get on par. And what we've seen over the years with Nerdio is, is they keep pushing it. They keep adding these new features, adding these things. And as Matt mentioned, you know, having an ROI that, you know, f you know, four or five days into the month, you know, you're you've paid for Nerdio and everything else is icing on the cake. But having having that and, and Nerdio is just laser focused. This is all they do. They don't have any other side gigs or other things that, you know, distracting them. This is all they do. This is and they're laser focused on doing it. And they have a great relationship with Microsoft, too. I mean, they work closely with them. So, Ron, your, your customers are thinking they're going to wait around at some point for Microsoft to find ways to spend less money on Microsoft? Well, what it is, 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 is really, you know, setting up the AVD, getting that set up, all of that, you know, and, and thinking, hey, we can start with Nerdio now. And if they do get on par, then they can cut over and cut them out. But you're not seeing that. You're seeing Nerdio continue to innovate and, and provide the features. Yeah, that was just a joke. Microsoft's yeah. never going to fix it. <laughs> they want you to drive consumption, not find ways yeah. to limit consumption. But yeah. if, you know, let's 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 assume that their head and hearts in the right place. But to some degree, you know, why would they? They got third parties like Nerdio that can justify themselves in a matter of days or weeks and make it happen for everybody and, and all work out in the long run. OK, so we probably talked in these podcasts tons about how you save money with iGel. Seb, you want to you want to hit it real quick and talk about how iGel, in case we have a listener that doesn't know iGel really well, can help save money as part of this equation. So we have one big advantage, we are doing the same as Nerdio, not on the same level, but we are focused also on one simple topic. We are focusing on endpoint management. So we are not doing some interesting MDM solution that like we tried in the past, we're really just focusing on endpoint management. That's our strength. We're focusing on security, on speed, and on functionality. So if you think of old hardware, which is not powerful enough to run Windows, or maybe Mac OS in specific cases, then you can use Azure OS on it and deliver in, let's say, less than one minute, a complete operating system with all the settings to a user sitting somewhere in another country with no IT experience at all, just with one USB stick or just with one deployment type that you want to use. And that's where we are saving your time, where we are saving your money because you do not need to create extreme complicated uh, logon scripts, group policies, maintain uh, local antiviruses or strategic software deployment solutions. Everything is one hand. So if you want to deploy Citrix, you have Azure OS. If you want to deploy a specific media plugin from whatever unified communication solution, we already package it for you. So you do not need to do that. And that's one of the things that we have seen in the pandemic moment where uh, people needed to move to their home offices with bring your own device or with company, their laptops. The first thing was, Quick, quick, quick. And then in a second time, they were thinking about security and uh, about the user experience. And that's where 
the quick quick solution wasn't working at all because you didn't have to, any kind of remote support, you didn't have the chance to deploy updates, you didn't have the chance to uh, support the end user if he has an issue. And that's where yeah. Agile is coming up with the Agile Cloud Gateway and the Agile Universal Management Suite. And, and, and I think the other thing to add to Seb was just, you know, what the whole IGEL ready ecosystem, you know, we have a hundred and I don't know, 10, 20 um, partners that integrate their stuff in. So if you're going into a hospital and need dictation or, or whatever, all of those things are already baked in and integrated into the IGEL OS. It's not a science project, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. The, the what IGEL does and specializes in, now what Nerdio, this goes back to my comment a while ago about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? You just go get your favorite peanut butter, your favorite jelly, put it on your favorite bread, put it together, and you've got a solution, right? A solution for lunch or a snack or what have you. And it doesn't take a genius to take things that are great individually, but when you put them together, make even more sense. Hopefully that's okay. I use peanut butter and jelly, chocolate, peanut butter, Reese's cups, you name it. That's Those what I'm going to have for lunch. Yep. <laughs> you got me <laughs> and a glass of milk. <laughs> All right. So we're just about out of time for our hour long podcast, but let's just go to the conclusion here. Um, Matt, you want to conclude us from what the article says on why yeah. Nerdio, <laughs> and then we'll come to the IGEL guys, why IGEL, and then put the peanut butter and jelly together and eat that sandwich. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, if you're looking to secure, manage, and optimize Azure Virtual Desktops, right? You know, you should be looking at Nerdio and IGEL. Um, you know, really. Can I pause you there real quick? Sure. Every customer out there, whether you're the biggest Citrix shop or VMware shop in the world, should be taking a look at Azure Virtual Desktop with Nerdio to see how far it can take them just because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing your job if you didn't at least take a look at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Any customer in the world can go to the Azure marketplace right now and download our software free of charge for 30 days. In fact, I tell you what, if you mention Zintegra and you mention this, uh, this podcast, I'll give you 60 days uh, free, free licensing to test this out. Uh, it's really a no brainer, Andy. You know, if you're looking for um, you know, really the best TCO for cloud computing in the industry. Uh, it's Nerdio, IGEL, and, and AVD. Uh, in fact, you could consider us probably the perfect match, right, for the best TCO in the, in the market uh, as a little teaser for, uh, for a webinar that we have uh, coming up next week, and I'll let you address that. Um, but yeah, I think when it comes to really maximizing the potential of cost, but also not sacrificing your end user experience. Uh, there's not a better solution on the market. So, so let me change what I said briefly. Um, you should, if you're in this industry, in IT, in end user compute, you should take a look at AVD. You should take a look at AVD with Nerdio and you should do this every year to see if between the two, they've gotten the features that you need that allow you to move forward with the product because it's moving so fast uh, I do a monthly podcast on AVD alone. Um, it really needs to be something you look at and give it a hard look every year, just so you make sure you're not missing on an opportunity to solve this challenge with the up and coming, you know, modern, modern way of approaching it. Um, Ron, um, IGEL, wh wh where does IGEL become the jelly to the peanut butter to make this a better solution for customers? Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, again, as, as you're moving those workloads into Azure, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to continue running Windows on the endpoint as well, you know, and especially like use cases where a customer may, may have contractors, remote workers, instead of, you know, handing them out a laptop or making sure things are set, just give them a UD pocket or a little thumb drive that the contractors can plug it into their laptop, boot up and, and continue to work. The other thing is business continuity. We have some customers where they assign a user a laptop, but they also give them a UD pocket so that in case if the laptop were to fail or whatever, they could take that UD pocket, plug it into their daughter's gaming machine and continue to work. You know, very simple. You know, I've never thought about the concept of giving them uh, an iGel device or any device and then having a UD pocket as a backup plan. Uh, I'm the guy that works from the hotel kiosk a lot. Uh, I see the power in that without a doubt. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely see we're having that redundancy, that, that business continuity plan, uh, getting to the cloud, which is for the most part, always going to be there. 
um, from a device that you pick at the moment. That that's powerful. Yeah, and I think the other thing is just kind of those specific use cases. You may have a customer that has a, a legacy VDI solution in their data center, but now they've got a use case for contractors or, or remote workers. It may not make sense to continue to spin up the legacy environment, add hardware there. You know, you could use Nerdio and AVD and give them that and then give them an IGEL UD pocket to plug into their own device. Yeah. Well, guys, I appreciate the conversation. I think we covered it well. Uh, I think we're out, I'm, I'm out of time. I know you guys probably, Seb already left. Seb just took off. Yeah. Uh, he, he let me know, but uh, great conversation. Looking forward to doing this again. Um, I think Matt, somebody on your team is going to be joining me for the AVD podcast that we do. And we'll be throwing in what Nerdio can do on top of that, but more to come on the uh, Nerdio world. And as, as usual, we'll keep covering IGEL and we just love that story. All right. Good time guys. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Ron. All right. Thanks. I'll take care. Bye-bye.